Hi, it's Dr. Z. In this video, I will review one specific type of ANOVA. By the end of this video, you'll be able to conduct a one-tailed hypothesis test with one-way ANOVA. Please print the corresponding handout for this video, and feel free to pause the video at any time to take notes on the handout. Thus far, you've learned that an independent t-test allows for the comparison of two separate or two independent groups. Now, what happens if you have three separate groups that need to be compared in a study? Do you want to conduct three different independent t-tests? The answer is no, and this is where an ANOVA, or analysis of variance, comes in. ANOVA combines multiple t-tests into a single test to reduce the probability of type 1 errors. This video will explain how researchers can do that. In its simplest form, ANOVA allows for the comparison of three or more groups, like these three LEGO stormtroopers. In other words, the sample means of each group will be compared with each other in this statistical test. The words one way refer to the fact the ANOVA has only one independent variable that is being tested. In ANOVA terminology, an independent variable is referred to as a factor. When put together, a one-way ANOVA is a statistical test that is comparing three or more groups on one independent variable. Because ANOVA is combining multiple t-tests into a single statistical test, and ANOVA is comparing three or more samples, calculating an ANOVA requires many formulas and steps. This graph describes the basic structure of ANOVA. Please pause the video to write down the basic structure of ANOVA. Now, recall that ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance. This means that we're studying how the three samples vary from each other. At the bottom of the pyramid, we will have to calculate the sample variances and the degrees of freedom for all three samples. The middle of the pyramid begins to determine how the three samples vary between each other and within each other. The top of the pyramid is where the ANOVA comes together to calculate the total variance of the three samples, or if there is a difference between the three samples. To calculate an ANOVA, the formula is referred to as F ratio. Ratio is a fancy word for fraction, and therefore the F ratio is a fraction. Therefore, the ANOVA statistical test you'll be calculating will end up with an F-score. As a result, there are at least five new formulas for calculating a one-way ANOVA. With this brief review of the structure of ANOVA, let's get started. This diagram illustrates the process of hypothesis testing. We will use the same four steps in conducting a hypothesis test with one-way ANOVA, with some modifications along the way. Step one, the yellow Lego, is to state hypotheses. Since we're comparing three separate groups, we are measuring the difference between the sample means. Therefore, the written statement for the null hypothesis must include the word difference and specify that there are three or more groups being compared. If there truly is no difference between the hypothetical population means, then the means will all equal each other. The research hypothesis will reflect that there is at least one difference between the three samples. This is the simplest version of a research hypothesis for a one-way ANOVA because there can be multiple different ways that the groups can be different from each other. For example, the first group could be different from the second group, but not from the third group, and so on. We can have multiple different combinations. As such, there will be no notation for this generic research hypothesis. Step two, the blue Lego, is to set the criteria to make a decision well, to decide whether the study worked or not. This step has modifications because we're comparing three separate groups now. 
First, we will still set our significance level P as we did for previous hypothesis tests. Second, we will have our first modification. Since we're comparing the difference between three groups, we will have a new degrees of freedom called DF between or between the groups. It is also referred to as the numerator DF. This is the new formula where N groups refers to the total number of samples or groups being compared. Since we're also comparing the difference within each group, we will have another new degrees of freedom called DF within. It is also referred to as the denominator DF. The new formula for DF within takes into account the DF of each sample. It is important to note that numerator and denominator refer to fractions, which is basically what the final formula is for an ANOVA. Finally, we will find the critical region for the ANOVA. However, the critical region is now an F instead of a T because we will calculate an F ratio for the ANOVA statistical test. Since the critical region is an F, guess what? We have a new table called the F distribution table. The stars here are to remind you of the important modifications that students commonly forget. Let's review what this new table looks like. The F distribution table is organized with the column for denominator degrees of freedom, which is also referred to as degrees of freedom within. It has columns for significance levels and columns for numerator degrees of freedom, which is also called DF between. There are common mistakes that students can make while reading this table. This is an example to practice reading the table. Using this example, we first will find the DF within and make sure to go to 0.05 significance level. Second, we will find the DF between. And then third, we'll find the answer where these two columns meet. In a one-way ANOVA statistical test, the critical region will be different for each test because it's based on the sample size and the number of groups. Additionally, there's another significant change to the critical region for a one-way ANOVA. Recall that ratio is a fancy way of saying fraction. And the formula for the F ratio is actually a fraction. And fractions can never be negative. Therefore, an F distribution is always one-tailed, just like the photo here. In other words, the critical region will always be positive. The number one mistake students make is writing a critical region of plus or minus F when it can only be a critical region of plus F. Step three, the red Lego, is to collect data and calculate sample statistics. It is in this step where we will calculate the one-way ANOVA using the basic structure of ANOVA that we briefly discussed earlier. Let me introduce our new formulas. First, we will calculate the grand mean, which is now referred to as GM in statistical notation. Basically, this new formula is just the average of all the sample means, or the mean of all the means. Second, we will calculate estimated population variance, which is now referred to as S squared M. This new formula may look overwhelming at first glance. This formula is asking for each sample mean to be subtracted from the grand mean, then squared, then all of them added up together before you divide by the DF between. When connecting back to the basic structure of ANOVA, these two formulas are at the base of the pyramid. So let's move up the basic structure of ANOVA to the middle of the pyramid. The middle of the pyramid involves measuring any differences between the groups and if there's any differences within each group. So now we will calculate the variance between and within groups. In other words, we need to calculate MS between, which is the variance between groups, and MS within, which is the variance within groups, with these two new formulas. 
I want to highlight that these formulas are only used when there are equal sample sizes for each group. Finally, it is time to calculate the one-way ANOVA by calculating the F ratio, which ultimately determines the total variance between the three groups. We will use this new formula, which divides the MS between by the MS within. Step four, the green Lego, is making a decision about whether the study worked or not. Guess what? Fortunately, this step stays the same. In this test, we are using an F score instead of a T score. Now that we reviewed the steps of a hypothesis test with a one-way ANOVA, are you ready to practice your new knowledge? I have one practice example for you to review. This is a short summary of the four steps that we described above. Please note that these steps are for a one-tailed hypothesis test with one-way ANOVA. Modifications for this test are noted in bold. Please pause the video to write down these steps on the video handout. This lecture example is based on a real scientific study. The researchers studied the effect of attachment styles on violations of trust. The details of this research study are also provided in your video handout. The researcher compared three attachment styles, secure, avoidant, and anxious ambivalent. This study had N equals 10 students in each group, all of whom were in serious romantic relationships. The researcher then asked the participants to record the number of times during a single day that their partner had done something to violate their trust. Examples of trust violations range from not returning phone calls or text messages, checking out other people, or to actively cheating on their partner. The data for each group is provided in the table on your video handout. I encourage you to pause the video here and try to do the four steps on your own first, then resume the video to show the answers. Step 1. Since we're studying the effect of three attachment styles on trust violations, the hypotheses will include these variables. It is important to be specific and clearly state the three groups. In notation, if the first sample is not different from the second or the third, then mu for each sample will equal each other. The research hypothesis will reflect that there's at least one difference and there is no notation for this generic research hypothesis. Step two. As a researcher, we get to decide the significance level and the preferred one is 0.05. In a one-way ANOVA, the first modification is to calculate the two different types of degrees of freedom. DF between is two, and since each sample has an N of 10, the degrees of freedom for each sample is nine. And then when added together, the degrees of freedom within is 27. Because F ratio is a fraction, and fractions can never be negative, the critical region F will be above the mean. The box indicates the final answer that I'll be looking for on problem sets and exams. Step three. This step is where we calculate the one-way ANOVA. First, we will calculate the grand mean or the mean of all means, which is 3.33. Second, we will calculate the estimated population variance. I recommend slowing down here when doing the calculations for this formula in particular, because students often make a mistake in this step. Third, we will calculate the variance between groups, which is 12.1, and calculate the variance within groups, which is 3.35. Finally, we will calculate the total variance, or F ratio, re which results in an F of 3.61. The box indicates the final answer. Step four, we finally did it. <laughs> now we need to compare the sample F score that we calculated in step three to the population prediction, which we determined in step two. In other words, does the F of 3.61 fall in the critical region F from step two? Well, since the F score is past the critical region, the answer is yes. 
then the decision is to reject the null hypothesis. The box indicates the final answer that I'll be looking for on problem sets and exams. More specifically, since this f-score is greater than 1, it indicates there is a difference between the three groups. After a hypothesis test is conducted, the researcher must report and interpret the results of the study. Well, we're not done yet. Chapter 6 introduced how effect size plays a role in statistical significance. We now need to measure the effect size for a one-way ANOVA. However, effect size for ANOVA is now called R squared, or the proportion of variance accounted for. These are the steps to calculate effect size for a one-way ANOVA. Please pause the video to write down these steps on the video handout. Now, let's briefly calculate effect size for this hypothesis test. In this formula, the f is referring to the f that you calculated in step 3. The most common mistake is using the critical region f instead. The box indicates the final numerical answer. This numerical answer will be reported in the summary statement. We also need to translate the numerical answer into a sentence. R squared in a percentage is 21%. This verbal description will be used in the interpretation statement. Finally, after all that hard work, let's practice those summary and interpretation statements. There are three items that will be new to the summary statement. First, since the sample means were provided in a table, we do not need to write the first sentence of a summary statement like we used to do. Now we will only have one sentence for the summary sta statement. Second, we need to include both degrees of, the fr degrees of freedom in the parentheses. We will place the df between first, followed by df within. And third, we will use f instead of t. I encourage you to pause the video here and try to write the statements on your own first, then resume the video to show the answers. The summary statement will now consist of only one sentence. This sentence will report the f-score, the degrees of freedom between and within, the effect size, the decision you made, and all this important information. The interpretation statement will now consist of three sentences. The first sentence will explain that a difference exists between the three groups. The second sentence will explain the effect size. And the third sentence will indicate that post hoc comparisons need to be conducted. In summary, research studies may want to explore the difference between three separate groups. Instead of doing multiple independent t-tests, and risking type 1 error, a one-way ANOVA allows for the study of these comparisons. Learning how to conduct a hypothesis test with a one-way ANOVA is one more major LEGO building block needed to understand statistics.